Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 3. In this episode we are going to take a look at bringing in our character, we're going to take a little look at something called prefabs and we're going to take a little look at something called animations as well. And if you remember we actually brought in this little animation tab, we're not going to use it just yet but you know, we'll still look at some animations. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon to stay up to date with everything on the channel, including this series. And with that in mind, let's bring in our character. So something you may have heard of uh, within Unity is something called the Asset Store. And the Asset Store is a fantastic place, especially for beginners, to research and find tons of different assets, whether it's a script, a model, textures, there's absolutely tons of stuff there. There is this whole thing about asset flipping, but generally you don't need to worry about it. I have a couple of videos on asset flipping and the asset store itself. If you want to, check them out. But at this point, we're developing for ourselves and we don't really need to worry too much. The asset store is a fantastic place. So if you don't have this tab up here, you can go to window and then click on asset store right here and it will open this window. Most of the stuff on here is paid, however, this channel does everything for free. So we're going to use free assets. And don't forget, we also provide you with some assets free as well. So we're looking for a playable character. We could, if we wanted to, research through these different menus. Please feel free to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight to the asset we want. So in the search bar at the top, I'm going to look for something called Contract Killer. Now, yep, that is the style we're going for here. That is the style. Because this is Grand Theft Auto, why not go for this? So I'm choosing this one right here. And you may recognize it from the thumbnail of this series. And as it loads, I would just like to say that I have no input on this whatsoever. I've not been paid by the creator of this to use this asset. I have chosen this completely on my own because I believe it fulfills the needs that we require for this game. There is a lot to this character. It may not be the best looking, however, if you want something better looking, please feel free to find one. You may have to pay though, so keep that in mind. If you like what you see, please check out the creator and see what else he has. We'll probably use assets from this guy, or girl, I think it's a guy, later on this series anyway. So all you need to do at this point is click on import and then click OK when it comes up with the little menu. Make sure you are logged in though. I'm currently not logged in, but you just need to import, download, and when it comes in, you'll have this folder down here. So let's head back to our scene view up here. And if we go into this folder, you'll see that we have tons of different folders open. And we can go to characters and contract killer. And you can see we have two assets down here. These are known as prefabs. A prefab is basically a collection of objects, whether it's just cubes, or spheres clustered together in Unity, or whether it's something that's created in a 3D modeling engine and brought into Unity. Either way, we're going to use this contract killer prefab, the one with the clothes on. Remember I said earlier we're going to use some animations as well? Well, this is where it gets interesting. So if you click the little arrow here, you won't see a lot. However, there are, within this whole package, animations in this folder, and we need to attach them to this model because they're currently not involved. So what we'll start off with is dragging and dropping this model into the scene. And if we double click up here, we can zoom in. He looks a little bit small, so we might need to increase his size for now. So let's change the scale of our player to 1.5 by 1.5 by 1.5. Keeping everything the same scale here, even though it isn't a cube, still keeps the model relative to itself. So if we hold the middle mouse button and use the right mouse button, we can pan around and just have a look at our model. This is known as a generic T-pose. Whether the arms are stretched out or whether just dangling like this, then it's just a T-pose. So what we're going to do is, even though we have a couple of things attached here, we're going to get rid of them. So we can get rid of the animator. So right click, remove component. Okay, so it's telling us we need to remove these down here first. So player controller, right click, remove component, actions, remove component, animator, right click, remove component. The reason we're doing this is because we're going to control our character a little differently. We're going to give ourselves greater control than what those do. 
we're not going to get into scripting in this episode. However, next episode is going to be solely focused on some C-sharp coding. I'll explain a little more later on in this tutorial. So now let's take a second and let's use our camera to actually get a decent view of something because so far we haven't moved this camera. It just looks as it is. So let's have the camera selected here and let's drag the camera backwards on the Z axis so we can hold the left mouse button on the blue arrow and move it back. Now let's hold it on the green arrow, the Y axis and drag it up. And you can see we're actually seeing something relative to the game now. We can actually see something through our camera in the camera preview. So if we move this way, move back a little bit, and while we're at it, why don't we rotate the camera slightly downwards so we get a bit of a full body view of our model. So rotate, so you can hold the left mouse button down over the X and just drag until it pans down. So if we press play now, this is quite literally our game. This is where we're going. So you've got to think we're already in the third episode and we're actually seeing something relative to Grand Theft Auto now. Obviously, it, we're going to build up piece by piece. You know, you can't expect to suddenly build a Grand Theft Auto in three tutorials, but stick with us. Anyway, let's come out of this and now let's set up our actual model ready for the next episode. If we go to our animations folder here, you will see loads of different objects. Now, these aren't technically animations, but they do hold animations. And as I say, the reason we remove the animator component from the contract killer is because we're using animation components. There are two components, animator and animation. I always prefer to use animation because I feel it gives greater control of what we're doing with our character. And what we need to do is extract some animations from these files. So by default, we want the animation. So click idle and you'll see here it has two rig, rig asset. And here is the animation. The one with the play button, that's the animation. We can't have it within this the way we're going to use it. So we need to extract this out of its prefab. And we can do that by holding control and pressing D on that animation. And you'll see it now creates its own individual asset. We'll also have the run asset. So find run, select the run animation, hold control, press D to basically duplicate this out of its prefab. And I'm going to close them up. And while we're at it, let's take uh, one more. Do we have walk? We'll take walk. How many we're going to use in the next episode, I'm not entirely sure. It just depends how long it goes on for. But either way, let's now take this walk animation. Hold control, press D, and there we go. So we now have three separate animations that we can apply to our model right here. And to do so, we need to click on Add Component. And we can type in this little search bar up here, Anim. And you'll see you come up with Animation and Animator. Make sure we do click Animation. At this point, it will give you a couple of options. This basically tells you the default animation up here, currently set as none. Animations, if we click the little arrow next to it, we have size zero because there literally aren't any right now, and play automatically. So let's start by having the idle animation in here. So let's drag and drop idle into here. Now what we need to do is sort the size out. Because we have three animations that we want to use, we're going to change this to size three. Element zero, element one, element two. So we have idle as our default. So let's add that as element zero. Let's add walk as element one and let's add run as element two. Now this logically should make our character play, but it won't. The reason being is we need to set these three animations as legacy. Why? Because they're in the animation components and that's just how they work for this. And they are a legacy object of this animation, hence they need to be set that way. To set them as legacy, we can select idle, hold control, press walk, keep holding control and press run. So we have all three animations selected. Now what we need to do is go over here to the inspector panel and in the very top we have a little menu option. If we click it, and then click debug, we can then tick this legacy option right here. 
And all that will do is set each of those three animations to legacy. To go any further, we need to send ourselves back to the inspector panel. Remember, we are in debug. Make sure we come out of debug. A lot of people do get confused about that because they think the inspector panel doesn't look how it should look. It's because you're in debug. So we can select it and go back to normal. So here we can see multi-object editing not supported. That means we have to go animation one at a time. Idle, wrap mode, we will have as loop. Run, we will also have as loop and walk loop as well. So at this point, we've applied three different animations. However, the default animation will always play until a C-sharp script commands the object to do something else. So if we press play now, we should see he is in idle mode. We can see him just animating. Yep, you can see his head turning just there. So on the same principle, we could theoretically change our idle animation to the walk animation. All that requires is just dragging and dropping the walk animation right there. And if we press play, he will walk on the spot or forwards as it were. So you can see how this is working. It looks like he's going forwards, then coming backwards, forwards, coming backwards, because the animation is on loop. If we were to set it to once, which we will do now, so animation, wrap mode once, he will walk ahead a couple of steps and then stop, because the animation will only play once. So this is handy for us, again, when we're controlling the actual animations with the scripts. So I'm going to set this now back to loop, and I'm going to save my scene. So already, I'm hoping you guys can really see where I'm taking this series. There is so much we're going to do from here on in. And I am absolutely looking forward to taking this to the next level. And while we're at it, if we take the camera, there's one thing I want to just quickly play around with before we finish this tutorial, and that is the field of view. So depending on how you want your game to look, this field of view is massively important. So if we drag it, down you can see just how much it kind of zooms in and if we bring it out you can see how much it's zoomed out generally 50 to 70 is a good field of view to have however it depends what kind of aspect ratio you're aiming for hence your screen resolution if you're aiming for standard 1080p or even 4k because it's a standard resolution it's not ultra wide then you're better off with 50 60 or 70. So I'm going to stick with 60 for now, just because, as I say, it's relative to my screen resolution. Okay, guys, so what I think you should do in the next uh, before the next episode, I should say, is if you want to get this contract killer, play around with him, see what you can do with him. Uh, we may modify him at some point, but I'm not 100% sure. If you want, work some more of these animations into it. It's entirely up to you what animations you want to work with, but we probably will use all of them at some point it just depends how how our script actually comes together speaking of scripts that's what we're going to be do in the next episode the next episode is going to be your introduction to c sharp coding programming in unity is fun if you can understand what you're doing but please don't worry i will guide you through every line every step of the way so the idea is next episode we're going to create a character controller from scratch so we're going to be able to control our character right here right now so until that next episode guys please remember to subscribe to keep up to date with this series because this series is going to be epic and until that next episode thank you very much for watching